You know week 5 and 6 years. Hmm. Week 5 is church activities. Uh, again, we need to, to understand the mind, the world view um, of that and challenge our world view a little bit. If you look at what is church activities, it's an interesting one to see. And then church organization. How do we organize the church? The things that we've talked about just now in the beginning. Who is making the decisions? Um, we talked about uh, the, the Tats Reform Church with its strong hierarchy. Seems to be a hierarchical steer system, although their um, their uh, confessions say differently. <laughs> okay, week five, day one. We talk about activities, and the first activity that they handle a little bit is worship. The worship, well, we can think a little bit about the worship, what we experience in our lives, what does it mean to you, what's the reason for that, how does it help you grow, I mean, worship itself. How does it create intimacy with God? Um, and in the big group sometimes, it doesn't. <laughs> uh, but you have feelings, and people like feelings, but that's... That's a dear to us sometimes. Not always. There's feelings in, in your relationship with God. Oh, of course. And uh, it's nice also if you work to see that God also has feeling, uh, feelings for the world. <laughs> it's not, I could love is not a feeling, but there's feelings in both. Oh, and the passion that you have is, there's feelings in both. There's, there's the anger sometimes if you see things that's not supposed to be like they should be, and you can use it in the kingdom. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit. But anyway, it's a good introduction to let us think about this activity of worship in the congregation. It's not just like uh, singing or whatever. Through the seven responsibilities um, yeah, of, of a member, the church do their work. We've done the seven responsibilities last time um, of the church member. Um, and actually, it's not the work of the, or the church, it's the work of God. Um, it's not limited to only the church. Because, I mean, again, what is your worldview of church? If you think of the local congregation, um, I mean, that is only a, a sign of the true church, it's not the true church. And how do you think about it? And if you say it's the work of the church, um, we challenge our worldview. Mm -hmm. The congregation of different denominations is doing God's work. Yeah. God's church. Uh, not their, they're not doing their own work. It's not the work of the church. The local denomination, denomination. It's not the work of the denomination. It should always be God's work. Yeah. The work of God. Yeah. God planned worship, not man. Um, and going through just uh, some of the points that I take from the, the, from the book. Um, to, and worship, they say, is to beware of God. It helps you to be, beware of God and develop your love of God. It can be a little crooked way of, of, of developing your love of God because you understand love sometimes as a feeling. Mm -hmm. it, a lot of people, members, who still work with feelings, that the feelings guide them, how they feel, and they want to feel good, and she, she, uh, clapping hands and dancing and singing, yeah, it makes sense. It's, a it's a nice feeling, it's a, it's, uh, and if that becomes your objective, mm -hmm. I don't think you understand worship. worship. So what is the, um, I'm asking what kind of What's the definition of worship and um, what are examples of this kind of worship? Um, would they, just let me finish that because they say something about that. Okay. Um, let me first do what the book say about it. Right. Um, they, okay, they, they are used 1 Chronicles 16 23. Sing a song to the Lord, all the earth. Proclaim the salvation day after day. Again, I think they only by this. Quoting this verse is more about the singing the song. Uh, the worship in, in the church service, basically. Yeah, but, uh, and they 
uh, they connect in that more or less, but I think it's much wider yeah. in any case. Uh, it, is, it is not sad, it is joyful. And now again, it's a, a feeling focus mm -hmm. sometimes. Um, because worship can also be a struggle. There can be, there can be a struggle, there can be a sorrow too. Yeah. Yeah. It's not always uh, a joyful feeling, but in the struggle there is joy and peace. But it's different. <laughs> I can't, it's difficult to describe it. Sweet the songs. <laughs> worship means to show worth or value. That's how they put the definition. You show worth or value of God. Um, you will, that's in the book, in any case. In the Old Testament, worship was, the way, was very formal, they say, but it became simple in the New Testament. The New Testament is much simpler, includes uh, here's the actions of worship, as I put it in the book. Praise, singing, prayer, scripture reading, giving and teaching of preaching. Giving and teaching of, uh, of preaching is the, how they describe the acts of worship. Again, um, I think we can, we can answer the questions, but we can add personal notes here. <laughs> Put it that way. <laughs> um, from, from my side, I would say, worship can be a very, very deep, uh, and I believe it is a means of show worth of God. Uh, and, and not that he, he needs us to make him big. He doesn't need us to make him big. But we need to hear ourselves proclaim his greatness so that we can be more open to it. Mm -hmm. It's more like that. It's changing us, it's not changing him. Worship changes us, not him. Um, so we know sometimes, you see in the song sometimes, they say, um, we, make your, your, we make your name great. Um, but I mean, you cannot make his name really great. <laughs> you, you can make other people to understand his name for greater by singing maybe and doing these things, but actually his name is great. You're just opening it up and uh, accepting it. This is a What? I know. It's all right. Okay. Um, because you know, the Bible says that they were dead and then it came upon them. Mm -hmm. and then when it came upon them, they were reacting differently. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it was the holy the same spirit. Mm -hmm. So which means that if I can feel that it, it just fill me with that is anointing, mm -hmm. I can just say, Okay, God. Just take everything with yeah. me. I can even reach that. Mm, yeah. But there's a, someone who can yes. just say, you just feel that this uh, God is lifting up his hand within him, but yes. without showing him. Yes. Yeah. But as for me, I can say, oh God, I can even reach that. That's a, that put the uh, act to it. Mm -hmm. you see. So it depends on how. That's why you see sometimes when we just read uh, the, 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 the wife of uh, our king, then we say, no, 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 this is too much. How can a king mm -hmm. can dance like this? She didn't understand, or she doesn't know, understand what David was going through. Mm -hmm. Because the Holy Spirit already just over you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. It depends on this. What, what's the Holy Spirit doing in you? It's a relationship. Is that, with that, that, that uh, it's, it's reacting yeah. on God. Yes, yes. 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 And, and, you, and, and that can be different from person to person. To person. Any yeah. Yes, yes. But my, and then I agree with you. The question for me is if you have this nice feeling and it's nice to be with God. What's the consequences of it? What's just for interesting sake now? What does it make you do? What difference does it make? What's the purpose of it? Oh, why is God making you happy? Um, or give you experience of Himself? Okay. Awesome. I, 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 yeah, I like it. That question is very interesting in the sense of 
very interesting. Um, uh, I'm going through stuff right now. And right today, right today, this is uh, something that happening mm. right today. The Holy Spirit mm. come maybe just tell me, listen here, my son. I know that you're going to do this, this, this. Yes. I've already done It's an encouragement for you. That encouragement. Now I must express it through maybe uh, worship, through something like that. To so just thank God about mm. what he, okay. he just has done for me. That right. Yes. And so now that encouragement is, is a very nice to hear that. Now you go back to your home into the same problem. No, re re remember, because you're talking about the faith, because whatever yeah. I'm doing, I'm doing it in faith. Yes. Because I know, because I know that whenever the Lord releases His word, yeah. it shall come to pass. Even if it's not yes. now, I know that if it's not tomorrow, but today, one day, because He's not the Son of Man. So that he can fly. Yes, yes, yes. So whatever he said, yeah, yeah. he will do it. Yeah. So I have faith in him. I was thanking him advance, saying that Lord, I trust you. I know that tomorrow this will come to pass. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm just thanking him. I'm worshiping him. Mm -hmm. I'm just uh, just pour my heart before him to say, Lord, thank you so much. I love you. I know that you're faithful God. So all of those things just to say it in advance, you say mm -hmm. that it should have come to pass. Like my bishop always says, sometimes we need to worship God in advance that we just put him back in debt mm -hmm. so that the Lord will remember. No, no, I have to do something mm -hmm. for my son. You see? Okay. That you, you experience it and, and it's in itself I think something wonderful. Um, it, and then you say, because of the worship, the problems that you have and the things that you're struggling with will come to pass. Yeah. So you believe by worshiping, the things will come to pass, or no, just no, confirmation? No, 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 it's not about believing by worshiping. Yeah. Because remember, everything that we are doing as uh, children of yeah. God, first of all, the first thing. It's Jesus. Yeah. That the, yeah. that the center of everything. Right. So whatever I'm doing, first I know that I'm a child Accepted. of God. So that's that the thing that I know. Yeah. So all other things, because he said that whoever just will live this, 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 this because of me. Yeah. So it's everything that I'm doing is because of him. Mm. So it, because it's about him. Yeah. So there's some benefits also that I can still get from him. Mm -hmm. If I get this, I just go before him, and then he can do it for me. If I ask, if he can, that's the motive is not about like so that I can be proud, so that I can be dirty. Because sometimes I can God get me that yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know house or uh, car, so that uh, my friend will see that car yeah. I'm driving now. You see, it's something like uh, it's not. Okay. I, our time is a little bit limited, but I, I'm just going to make some comments on that. Yeah, I would also like to make a comment, but you can continue. Yeah, you see that um, you didn't receive the relationship of the Lord in your worship. You already have the relationship with God, yeah. but you came to an uh, experience of it. Because you, you, you already have a relationship with the Lord, a 100% one, not a 99% one. Yeah. You already have a 100% forgiven relationship with God through Jesus Christ as His child. The worship just makes you experience something of Him, which is already true. Is, is that... You understand it that way? Yeah, yeah. So you didn't receive something new, mm -hmm. you just got the experience of what is already true. Yeah. You understand? I understand, but there's something that's around. <laughs> I think they just say, you also say, uh, I've already had it, it's true. But I believe also that uh, in if that day, they just say the worship was really deep. The Lord might maybe bring uh, another level of things, mm. of spiritual things, 
within what you have already. And the spiritual things will become real things. Yes, yes. Because now you go out maybe with a new motivation and experience of your truth and you will live something out there. Because my second question is, where do we worship? Is worship the singing and the joyful things in a church building? What about outside? Mm. No, wherever, wherever we are, wherever we are, that, that could be my answer. Because, like me, yeah. I worship God everywhere. I can be, they just say, I'm walking, um, I'm driving, I'm walking, and something that can just come within me as that. Yeah. Not just worship, like singing. I can sing, I can pray, I can. So I'm doing everything. And just so doing your work outside. Sometimes the I can go to scriptures and say, okay, God, this is what the yeah. Bible says, this, 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 this. Lord, yeah. be worship because of this. And Lord, also in your work. Just, it's yeah. like, like um, a carpenter. Yeah. Yeah. When he makes a table, yeah. he makes it good yeah. because his work is worship of God. Yeah. You understand? So he will not make it only nice and smooth on the top. He would even do it underneath. Yeah. Because he's not doing it for... In the first place, he's doing it for God. And that's also his worship. Like this. <laughs> so, worship is much wider than yeah. only that experience. Sometimes it's hard work. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Case, we need to continue with that. You want to say something? Okay. Um, I, I believe the greatest form of worship is expressed when you lose something. The Bible warns against um, considering gain to be godly in earnest because um, gain isn't always godliness. Um, so when the Christians um, start um, singing worship uh, songs when they were persecuted by the Romans and put in the Colosseum being eaten by lions, um, they weren't gaining anything. They weren't going to receive anything. They're going to be eaten by lions, mm. but they're singing to God. Mm. Now, isn't that worship greater than any other worship that they ever worshipped throughout their lives? <laughs> Giving up yourself is, is a worship. Is a worship. Yeah. yeah. yeah that, 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 yeah but that yeah. worship was also just them reminding themselves. Because of I, I remember. I remember when I said that. Just it depends on which situation you find yourself in. Yeah. Because that, that the, the true worship, because yeah. this we are talking about Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, mm -hmm. whereby they are supposed to be thrown into the fire. So, it's, you see the situation they found themselves. They need to worship God, because they said, you have to do it now, otherwise we just put you there. Mm -hmm. So they said, okay, no problem, we're not going to worship you. Because we are we probably yeah. just yeah. And many yeah. other Christians died. Yeah, actually, yes, of course. Yeah. And so now that's that worship. That, that worship. <laughs> it's just, uh, you know, it okay. depends on which. We Sorry, we need to go forward. I like this way. <laughs> it is very important not to think of worship. It's also mindset. If you talk about worship in the church, we think about the singing and maybe clapping hands in church. Yeah. That's a very, very superficial way of looking at it. But this is activities of the church, should, and the church is not act, being doing these activities only in the building. Actually, there they do a little bit. The most work of the Lord is done outside the building. And the most worship is outside the building. It's not in the building. Yeah. It's in the week. And most worship, as he said, is sacrificed. Yeah. Um, because we are in a process of dying in ourselves, we are not in a process of, of, of uh, just living and keeping ourselves. We are giving away ourselves because the one who gives it away will receive it. The one who only wants to receive will lose it. And I mean, so that is actually dangerous to think that worship is only receiving. Uh, it is actually more giving than receiving. But it, I mean, it just there's a mindset sometimes when we use words in the church like worship, and we need to help ourselves and other people to try and understand it's much wider. And actually, it's very dangerous to think of it only in our church mindset. There's changes need to happen. In any case, we need to go on. Baptist worship Sundays. You see.
<laughs> you worship right through the week. I'm not going to talk about it. You know, that's just worship on Sunday. Very average. Is that a principle? No, it, I think it's just the fact that you can make it together on Sundays. It's just... <laughs> Uh, I think we've got it in the other subjects very clearly that you actually every day you are in the Old Testament the seventh day of the week was observed. Now they go about the Sunday it's, it's a resurrection and that's why they worship. But they think of worship as singing songs in the church. That's what they think when they say this. And yes, that you do on Sundays. And that is part of worship. But we see it actually that's a the smallest part, the biggest part is outside of the building. So we yeah. just need to, if you look at these things. Baptists follow the calendar of Lent, Pentecost and so on. It's fixed things, but I think worship is a life. It's throughout your life. It's not only conforming the calendar. There is, a, there is not a fixed form of worship, they say. The service can change from Sunday to Sunday, but they're focusing now on Sunday. The way you worship can be different from Sunday to Sunday, but that's the singing part and so on. Um, and then, it, it's not out of tradition, um, or service is not to be entertained. You are not to be entertained in the service. They just... It is to meet God. Worship is to meet God. It's not to be entertained. Uh, celebrating God's plan for their lives. That's what I'm getting. It's from the book. Need uh, to respond to God and therefore there are normally in invitation at the end of the service. So what your worship, uh, through that, there's invitation to God. Mm. And therefore they invite you at the end to come and give your life to the Lord or react to what God is doing in your life. So they, they put it on the table that worship needs some reaction from you also. It's not only the singing. So the pastor is saying um, worship uh, is not uh, to entertain. Right? It's not to? To entertain. Yes, it's not to entertain. Yeah. So I want to something because I don't understand what you mean by worship is not to to have a, it's not only to have a nice time. No, it's for God. It's God's time. It's, it's something that you are actually giving to God through His Spirit working in that circle. Actually, I, don't, uh, I still don't get it. Uh, in which context are you talking? That, uh, you are, there are members who think yeah. they go to the worship because it's nice. And they want to sing with the others and be happy. Oh, we are talking about in the church. In yeah, church. in the church. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so there is uh, people that they are. It's all the people or just uh, some some, some some so some believers. Yes, or, or some, even the leadership. It might be people that don't believe that come yeah. to church because church. so we can call them religious. Yeah, religious yes. people. Yeah. That's what's going on. Yeah, it's okay. So, um, to us it looks like they're worshipping, yeah. but actually they're just singing. They're just yeah. there for the enjoyment yeah. of the singing yeah. and, yeah. Yeah. and yeah. The dancing yeah. and lifting just hands. And yeah. Yeah. For the joy of it, okay. not for, for worshipping. Uh, it's not entertainment. It is. Worship is actually a reaction and mm. on God oh, and He's working right. through us. Worship services should lead to decisions for God, they say. You actually, if you really worship God, there will be... Um, uh, and, and I think it's not only decisions for God, it's also worship will lead to transformation of the mm. community. If you mm -hmm. take worship in a wider sense. Day 3, Sunday School, Bible study, one of the activities of the church. I'm going quickly through that. Um, um, they... But one hour on a Sunday is not enough, they say, to teach uh, what, what, what Jesus teaches. You need more. Uh, all scripture is God, in 2 Corinthians 3.16, all scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in, in righteousness. So it's not, there's a lot of things that need to happen in teaching. And Acts 17 verse 11, now the... 
Berean Jews were of more noble character than those in Thessalonica, for they received the message with great eagerness and examined the scripture, the teaching side of it, every day and see if what Paul said was true. So they investigated and to see if what Paul said was true. They examined the scriptures every day. And uh, that's one of the verse from the Bible. Um, because but, but the, the, today, about that, today, if uh, you just go after, let's just say, a church service and then just go to your pastor or to your mentor, if you listen here, yeah? you just uh, teaching us about religious say, not know, religious uh, unity. And they you say this, this, I think, suppose yeah. not because it's not in the Bible. Yeah. So I don't actually, understand it. Let's Bible talk about it. So let, yeah. okay. you see, we tell you that if you, you still, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like a baby in uh, yeah. Yeah. things of God or spiritual yeah. thing. So you have just to, yeah. to know that what I say is like that. It's like a, he knows that he cannot yeah. agree to tell him what he. Yeah. And, and then immediately, if a pastor has that attitude, um, there is something wrong and you have a message for him. You need to talk to him about it, otherwise you are refuting your calling to help him. Mm. You need to help him, otherwise you are also guilty. You need to help him <laughs> to say, but if you say that, you don't believe that Christ worked in me also. Um, you need to explain, mm. you need to help him. Yeah. And, and uh, not out of out of a power struggle, it is helping, it's love, it's, but you care, you need to help a person like that. I believe the teaching, uh, that's what the one thing that say is one of the activities. Sunday school is not only for children, it's also for, for adults. You teach in Bible studies and other ways of teaching, but not only knowledge, knowledge uh, applied mm. is necessary. Your teaching must be knowledge applied. Not only knowledge, but applied knowledge. Practical. So practical you have to get feedback on the application of the truths and how people experience it. Like the journalist in the, in the paper, how does he experience God's love where he works? How did he apply it there? And he came back and he told his stories. Um, so it's, we, we sometimes in our teaching we take spiritual stuff because we have a spiritual uh, the sacred spiritual divide the not sacred uh, the, the uh, spiritual and secular divide yeah. we divide yeah. the things yeah. but it's used it's the bible is a handbook for life yeah. how to live it is into the world with all these things, secular things happening yeah. where the application takes place so it's should be integrated, um, but because of the church we ignore the, the new things, the Darwinism, all these things, the spiritual secular divide came and uh, now we are teaching nice spiritual things without connecting it to lives, because teaching without connecting to lives sometimes is not effective. Um, okay. Meaning, yeah, uh, le you learn to visit and, vis and witness, doing visit to other people and witness. You lead and teach, you pray and uh, minister to those in need, enjoy fellowship of other Christians, <coughs> use the Bible in their lives every day. Um, you teach them how to use the Bible in their lives every day. It's a five points that they give in the book. Um, it's maybe good to remember those uh, to see what is teaching one of the activities. Then uh, we go to day four, carry out the plan of the community of believers, um, develop activities that best carry out the plan of the community of believers. Um, the, it's actually God's plan through the community of believers and the church activities should serve those objectives. Um, okay, so many congregations have Wednesday meetings, sharing praises of 
uh, and problems and pray together. Many congregations, Baptist congregations have that. Choirs are important, uh, part of Baptist church. Practice music in the week, they practice how to, and then they sing in the Sunday. Women meets for special times and many, uh, for many activities, Bible study, lessons of child care, cooking or land crafts, grow garden, and might do visiting and witnessing. Um, the youth groups grow and develop youth, Christians, there's all the activities that they mention now in the church. But if you, if you look at those activities, you can actually do it outside of the church also. It's not necessarily that you must be in the church. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and it should be our, our <coughs> deepest calling is to, to, to be a witness in the world. Yes, yes. So, and we need to adapt sometimes our activities mm. to, to serve yes, the world. And I think good. some of our activities are not focused on the world. Mm. So we need to investigate all the activities that we do. Does it, does it uh, concur to God's calling for mm. us? Um, and, what, and God's calling for us is to go out go and, and teach the world and, and, and uh, yeah, uh, love them, become part of them and guess, be the light of the world and to witness, to help them teach others of Christ and grow the church. Um, yeah, and then when you talk about grow the church, it's not the Baptist church, it's mm -hmm. grow his church. His church, church yeah. yeah. The body of Christ. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, we can talk a lot about activities. I think we should have actually time to do that, but we our time is limited. But um, the type of activities that congregations should do to, com to, to be in uh, coordinate with their calling. What are they? And are we doing the right things? These are the questions that should be on the table of the congregation so they can discuss and pray about it. Not only do things because we've done it so long. Is a woman's meeting helping us in our calling? Etc. We need to ask a lot of questions mm -hmm. about the activities that we do. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, week six, that is now the form of government in the church. Now, there's the three forms. I think that's the most important thing in this week. Uh, uh, the Episcopalian. That's more or less a uh, hierarchy. Um, and the churches that like this one is like the Catholics and the Anglicans, they mm. Mm. love this bishop hierarchy mm. from top to bottom. Um, centralized um, government, um, where you work from the top to the bottom. Early church did have primary authority, the apostles, they were there, um, because they knew Jesus personally and they witnessed about him and they had a, a position that we say called the to be apostle, to be sent by Jesus to proclaim him. They replaced, uh, they even replaced the one who Judas said, but we, we, we lacking one apostle, so they've chosen another one in his place. So there was a bit of importance to the mm. position of apostle, the ones who've seen Jesus. After that, they were, there were no more apostles because that generation died and nobody knew Jesus personally as a, in his body. Um, they didn't know him, uh, so they couldn't uh, witness on that way. And uh, that doesn't qualify anymore. Um, uh, in Revelations 2 and 3, we see uh, no centralized authority, only Jesus has authority. Mm. At the end, it's only Jesus has authority. There's no centralized authority. Bapt Baptists are not, uh, they don't uh, belong to this group. Um, uh, there can be no humans who have authority over the church. It the second group is the Presbyterian system of government, church government. 
the local co congregation has two representatives organizing large body that they, that will have the authority in in the congregation. So there's a church council they call them mm -hmm. mostly, or some what they call mostly the leaders, the elders and deacons in the Presbyterian system. They have elders and deacons, and they form a group and they decide about the activities of the church. X15, some representatives seem to make the decisions. In, if you look at X15, where they were discussing the problems in the church, and, um, there were some representatives and they discussed the problems. However, in verse 22, the final decision was with the whole church. So, it means that uh, the whole church should help you listening to the will of God to decide. So then we have the congregational system. Um, authority is within the local congregation. Um, uh, associations, unions and conventions, uh, the different groups in the Baptist Church, is for, uh, is for fellowship and strength in num of numbers. They, they are not there for decisions. That's officially the Baptist way of thinking of it. There's no control from them. They suggest plans and programs and actions, but they don't decide about it. Um, Acts 6 and 7, deacons demonstrate, Acts 6, the, the was the seven deacons, demonstrates local authority. Acts 13, when local church sends Paul and Barnabas to, uh, as missionaries, are two examples where the local church sends missionaries, mm -hmm. it's a local church, and they've chosen seven deacons to do some activities, the local church, the local community. They act through prayer and finding God's will. So the local congregation, everyone is involved and has the responsibility to have a relationship with God, to hear what He wants us to do, and then they talk to one another and find um, sometimes they even have to vote because there are differences in understanding what the Lord wants us to do. And then they have to vote and see what is the majority and follow yes. that. But it's always in a pursuit to find God's will because He's the one that's leading the church through He's all the members of the church. That's the congregational word. Later on we see that in, in, in Ephesians, there is one of the gifts is apostolic gift. So it seems like the apostolic task is always with the two church members. <laughs> you will always be, you can call it even apostles, each member should be apostle sent by God. Yeah, um, you, I didn't. I think there's um, two th uh, different types of um, apostles. I think there's um, the uh, the apostles of the apostolic age, and then there's um, the concept of being an apostle in the sense of being sent by God. Mm -hmm. God. I divide those two concepts. Yes. Okay. Yes. okay. Um, <coughs> that might make the question more difficult. We <laughs> <laughs> have any authority anymore in yourself. Yeah. All you give all the authority. God. Yeah. So, I was so, under the, excuse, excuse me, the, the apostolic side that you actually have today is to give the word from the Bible to other people. Yeah. You, that, is, that is the yeah. difference. Yeah, sure. You don't have a direct contact yeah. and a direct yeah. training, but you, can give, you, you give an apostolic word to other people. But this question is quite deep. I, I yeah, I well, it's, yeah. That, it's, 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 a, it's a tough one. Because <laughs> they are. They are we, we, but at the end, we have the Spirit in us who are testifying about Jesus. Yeah, sure. I mean. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, in that way, I think okay, it comes close to the closest to that. Okay. <laughs> uh, church government, uh, it, three day three, is just uh, um, all members have obligation to attend to hear in meetings, to hear interpret the will of God. I'm not going to say much more. There's two good examples. You can, page 89, there's two examples they give. Maybe you remember one of the examples. 
Um, then church com committees in uh, day four, um, where they say that uh, committee work out all the details and give the options and the recommendations, um, but then they don't have decision, they cannot make decisions. If you have a committee to do some work for you, they dedicate themselves to find all the information and make some uh, uh, proposals and so on, but then it comes back to the whole con congregation. congregation to decide. <coughs> um, and they have this committee in Baptist Church um, for many issues. Uh, after that, they pre uh, represented in the congregation to decide because the committees cannot make any decision. Small churches can have a little, uh, as little as three members in a committee and bigger as no more people in it. Types of committees, now I'm just going to mention what they mention here. The church council or executive, um, that they coordinate a little bit more the programs of the, um, with the pastor as the chairman mostly. Um, and responsible for the plan and the general direction, but they make decisions on this, again, it goes to the congregation. And they have uh, nominating committees, those who locate in the congregation people for certain offices and jobs to do, finding the people with the gifts is their job. Um, and then there's a building and ground committee that will look after all the, the buildings and the responsibilities there. And then there's a finance and budget committee, there's a accounting committee, there's an usher committee, uh, bookings for seatings and so on, organizing those things, receive the offerings. There's a flower committee, looking for the flowers and the people who are putting it up there. There's a hostess committee, if having a church meal or plan that for the congregation, hosting activities and so on, they do that. There's, they give a lot of examples of committees in, in congregations and how they have to govern the um, functions of the church, of the congregation, I would say. Church officers, um, they are the, the, the people who minister equip church members. Uh, the local church decide how many is needed um, for equipping and, and uh, teaching um, church members. Must be church members uh, when they are elected and for a specific position. Um, I would like not to use the word position, but for a specific task. Mm -hmm. uh, in any case, Sunday school, or, uh, for example, is, is by, or Bible study directors, um, uh, is, uh, like the Sunday school director, that is his position, and he's, um, <coughs> he, he helps to find teachers that will you teach the children, different teachers working with him. Recording, sec uh, recording, sec about uh, this the director of Sunday school. Yes, yes. Uh, in, this is a, in, we were talking in Baptist. In Baptist church. churches, yes. Oh, okay, so yeah. that means yeah. in Baptist church. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just explaining the Baptist way of doing it. Recording of secretary, recording secretary, the ones who write down the minutes of the church, the club, um, of all the church business and membership doing the books of whose members and so on. Then there's a treasurer, and sometimes there's moderators in some of the congregations, one who leads the business meetings, um, it's like the chairman, they choose them. Uh, music choir directors in some congregations, program leaders for women, youth, choir, recreation, uh, fellowship and outreach. Um, then there's assistant trainees, are elected as well. So all is coming down from the Baptist Church as Congregational Church Government. Yeah, okay. And then, yeah, the first week, five, <coughs> is about the government, and the second week is about the, the different um, the government, uh, how does it work. Mm -hmm.